when we look at the psychological contributing factors for a specific phobia, we want to talk about two behavioural models. You remember back way in Unit 3? So the first one we're going to look at is classical conditioning. And classical conditioning precipitates a phobia. So think about the word precipitate. It's got a C in it. Think C. Classical conditioning causes the start of the phobia. So we want to talk about before, during and after as our three phases of classical conditioning and have a neutral stimulus, so something that doesn't invoke fear, so such as a dog, and then we're pairing that with an unconditioned stimulus or something that already gives us a response. So it might be being chased or attacked or bitten by a dog and that's going to induce fear. So your unconditioned response will be fear to being attacked and chased and then when you pair that with a dog, then that neutral stimulus becomes conditioned so you're now having a conditioned response of fear to all dogs. So you've generalized that phobia to all dogs and that starts the symptoms from occurring. When we look at the other behavioral model, operant conditioning, we say it perpetuates the phobia, which means prevents recovery. So an antecedent might be any experience where you might be exposed to dogs. So there's a party at the park and the behavior might be, hey, pretend that I'm feeling unwell so I don't go. So I avoid going to the park or anywhere where there'll be dogs. And the consequence is that I'm actually removing or subtracting fear. So I'm negatively reinforcing the avoidance behaviors. I'm going to more likely to avoid any interactions with dogs again. And that way I'm preventing myself from recovering from my phobia. The last type of psychological factors are memory biases and cognitive biases. And it's human nature, we generally remember things that are more fearful. Think about your amygdala activation, it's important for survival. So sympathetic nervous system arousal, it's really important. It helps the hippocampus encode that long-term memory. So we remember all those negative experiences with dogs and we tend to forget about all the positive or neutral experiences that we had because they weren't as significant. So they haven't been encoded as strongly in our long-term memory. And the last is catastrophic thinking. When we see a dog, we over-exaggerate what's going to happen and go, hey, that dog is strong enough. He's going to break off his lead. He's going to take out a vein in my neck and I'm going to bleed to death. And you go, geez, that's a bit full on. But remember, a phobia is irrational and intense. It doesn't make sense. It's unrealistic. And so then we can look at that when we get to the treatments for phobias, how to challenge that sort of thought process. So we have precipitating by classical conditioning, perpetuating by operant conditioning, and then you've got your memory and cognitive biases and catastrophic thinking.